Hi boys and girls, welcome to this another language arts lesson. Our topic for today is predicting outcomes. The story that we'll be looking at from our reader is Rain Soup by Hazel D. Campbell. Here are the objectives we hope to achieve at the end of this lesson. At the end of the lesson, students should be able to predict what is going to happen in a story and change their predictions as the story is being read. Now boys and girls, people make predictions all the time. Consider the weather. If you should look outside, what would you say the weather condition will be? We can look at the clouds. We can think about the wind. We can look around to see the things that are moving. If there are birds in the sky. And then make a prediction of what the weather will be about. Some people even predict the future. It is the same thing we do when we are reading our stories. We consider what the next event could be about. That is what we do when we make predictions. So then, what is prediction? It is a good guess about what the story will be about or what will happen next. Clues in the story or things you already know can help you to make a good prediction. The predictions must make sense using the clues given. You might be wondering why making predictions are important. Take a look. Why is making predictions important? It also helps us to make connections about what we already know to what we think we know. And it gets us excited about what we are reading. Before reading our story, there are a few things we must do and there are some questions we must ask ourselves. Before you begin reading, preview the title, table of contents and pictures. Ask yourself, does this remind me of any experiences in my life? Does this remind me of other books I have read? Have I read or heard something like this before? By doing those things and asking yourselves those questions, you will be well on your way in making good predictions about the story. So boys and girls, what do we do when we are predicting? Think about what has already happened in the story. Look for clues. Think about what you already know. Those things are in your schema. Make a guess of what you think will happen next. Here are three steps we are going to be using while doing our predictions. First, we are going to think. I think. Then, Think check. And finally, confirm predictions. Follow closely as we continue this activity. Remember, we can use picture clues to help with our predictions. Here is an example. How does this picture tell what will come next in the story? By looking at the picture, I can predict that the next event in the story will probably be about the children in the story gathering the things needed to make the fire for their grandmother. Think check. What is the best way to make predictions? If you said Stop and make a guess about what may happen next based on what would make sense, then you are correct. Now I'm going to read a part of the story that will help me to confirm the prediction I've made. 
on pages 23 and 24. Listen carefully. Grandma looked around the yard. She saw the pile of dried branches. She saw the blocks, but she didn't look very happy. The sky is overcast, she said. But maybe we have enough time to finish. Come, Jamie, my brother called to me. Help me bring the blocks. I ran to help him. This was better than playing hide and seek. We carried two blocks and set them in the middle of the yard. We went to the wood pile and took out pieces of dry twigs and dead branches. Come and help us, I said to Mary. She shook her head. She didn't want to be helpful. Jim and I pulled out dried twigs and smaller pieces of dried branches until Grandma said, That's enough. Grandma fixed the blocks. We watched as she crushed newspaper and put it between the blocks. Then she placed the twigs on top and lit the newspaper. Stand back, she told us. Fire is a useful servant, but a bad master. Now that you have listened to that section of the story, have you identified any evidence to support the prediction that we've made? Take a look. Supporting predictions with evidence from the story. When making predictions, we should be able to tell why we made each prediction. I think the children will gather the things needed to make the fire for their grandmother. I think this because the picture shows one of the boys holding sticks in his hand and the other boy putting some sticks together for the fire. How did I support my predictions? I read the story and based my predictions on the details from the story. Now boys and girls, you are going to do this activity for me. On your own, look at the picture then state what you think the next event in the story will be about. Now that you have made your predictions, why did you make that prediction? Wonderful. I trust and hope that you are now able to make good predictions as you read your stories. Before we go, let us review the objectives. Did we predict what is going to happen in a story? Yes, we did. Did we change our predictions as the story is being read? Yes, we did. I trust that you've learned how to make predictions. Until we see each other again, have a wonderful day.